Yo, what up guys? What up? What up? If y'all guys doing good today, guys, I'm going to be talking about uh, some things to be aware of before you start utilizing um, these database environments like BigQuery and Redshift. So they're very powerful. They're very feature rich and I use them by all means. I use Redshift in my, in my, um, processes, but there's some things to be aware of before you dive in and start to use it. So I just want to touch base. That's what we're going to be talking about this video. Just be aware of a few things before you choose that as your database, your data warehouse, right? To implement in your organization, your project, etc. Before we get started, guys, like always, man, give me a follow guys. Give me a like, give me a follow on Twitter, man. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, guys, let's get started. So, so, you know, as you're getting familiar with different databases, some of the ones that are going to start popping out, right? You know, you got your, your, your core relational databases like SQL server, which is Microsoft's version, Oracle, MySQL, Postgres, etc. right? Those are, um, some of them are open source. Some of them are not They're proprietary. So you got to pay a license to use it. Nevertheless, though, it's strictly just a database engine that you're using in this case, which means you can install it in any kind of, uh, server, right? And that server could live wherever you want it to live. It could live locally. It could live on your actual PC, your, your laptop. It could live in the cloud, right? AWS, uh, DigitalOcean, Azure, the list goes on and on, right? Doesn't matter. You could, you know, get it configured and up and running where, wherever and anywhere. So that's not an issue. But then you start, you know, hearing some of these other data warehouses uh, like BigQuery and Redshift, you know, two to be, you know, just to kind of name some and they're starting to become very popular. A lot of people are using them. A lot of people implementing them. You know, you may hear about, um, you know, just, it's one of those deals where it's very, um, it's actually being utilized more and more. I feel like there's some things to keep in mind. And again, I, I don't, I don't think they're necessarily bad, but you gotta be aware of this guys. And I say that because in one of my previous organizations that I worked at, I work for myself today, but at one point I was working for, you know, a company like anybody else and they end up moving everything was on prem and then eventually they end up moving everything to the cloud. Right. And ultimately they went with AWS. Right. So, and I thought that was a good choice overall. So they started building on AWS and one of the data warehouses that got utilized was Redshift. Right. So makes sense. They utilized Redshift, started building all the processes using AWS glue and so on, all this stuff either way, but nevertheless, all the data and everything going to the data warehouse, which is Redshift. What happened probably a good two years. This is like after I ended up leaving, still talk to certain people there and so forth. And I started hearing like, yeah, well there, the, um, uh, CTO made a decision that they're going to now be moving to Azure. And it was mainly financial Azure offered them a sweet deal. That's what it sounded like. And which is pretty much going to be cheaper. Right. And I don't know how much cheaper, but I'm assuming since this organization is pretty big and they were dealing with literally dozens and dozens of EC2 instances. And some of these instances were, I know not cheap, like easily a couple of hundred to even a thousand, 2000 a month. So they, they had, again, dozens of these, and then also databases and again, Redshift and the list goes on and on. So yeah, I'm guessing they were spending easily tens of thousands and not, if not hundreds of thousands, at least dollars per month. So again, either way they decided like, Hey, we're going to switch to Azure. We're getting a break. So they, they did it more for financial reasons. And I'm not saying that's not a good reason by all means, if you could save 20,000 a month or even 50,000, I mean, who knows, right? I don't know, but that's, that's real money. So, I mean, totally understand. So one of the problems they had was 
now they build everything, right? They build, they were using Redshift and AWS. They were using, again, a lot of their ETO jobs were being done in AWS Glue as an example. There were certain things that they did in, you know, their Redshift environment that it's very isolated to that Redshift only. So, and, and this is where you got to be aware when you start making these kind of decisions, right? When you start building since Redshift, you know, and some of these other services as well that these cloud cloud providers provide, you know, it's proprietary, right? It's their own version of it. You cannot pick up, you know, Redshift from AWS and move it over to Azure. It doesn't work that way. If you implement something in, let's say, Oracle SQL Server database, that's different. You could take that what you have and you could migrate that over to another, you know, to Azure, right? That's not an issue. But when you're dealing with something that's proprietary, which Redshift is proprietary for AWS, BigQuery is proprietary for Google and so forth, right? Azure has their own proprietary, um, you know, services as well, like Azure Synapse and, you know, some other services, they all got their own proprietary services, right? That they provide. And, and that's the thing where I'm just those of you who are new that are coming in and, you know, obviously you're probably learning and starting to build on BigQuery and, you know, Redshift and so forth that, uh, just be aware, man, you gotta, you gotta have some awareness of whatever you're building. I'm not saying that don't build it because it is proprietary, but what I am saying though, you gotta be aware, like don't implement a project, you know, on these services, especially if you know that dude, we may leave, like, you know, if it gets too expensive, we may need to go a cheaper option. And then next thing you know it, if you do leave like the way this company did, from AWS to Azure, dude, it was a pain in the butt. I wasn't, again, part of that organization no more, but certain conversations that I heard, people that I still had connections with, dude, it was it was tough because you had these people, you, you had a lot of developers that knew AWS very well. So they used all of the services to, to build these processes. Uh, to build a data warehouse, to ETL, all that stuff in AWS. Now that they were switching to Azure, they were dealing with an environment that they did not have any experience in. Not trying to say that they cannot learn it because they can. If you know one environment, it, it's not going to be so, too hard, but it's still, there's a learning process. There's going to, you're going to have to spend hours for these developers that have no experience in that environment, right? Like Azure, as an example, they got to get familiar with, it. they got to see what is the equivalent of AWS glue and Azure, right? Or, or you have to use some kind of a tool Informatica or something, right? You got, but then got to buy that license and there's additional costs, things of that nature. I think if I, if I remember, I think what they ended up doing was they ended up purchasing license for Informatica. Cause I think there was some concern with that too. Like, Hey, well, what happens if we switch from Azure and go back to AWS? So there was this, this fear aspect of it. Well, we don't want to be, we don't want to deal with the same issue again. So they actually started purchasing certain tools that ultimately you could take with you wherever you go. Right. If they decide to leave Azure and go back to AWS or wherever else, they don't have that issue. Again, sometimes you may not know, right? I mean, you don't know what you don't know, but nevertheless, man, whoever made the, the decision when, when they were initially on-prem and decided to, hey, let's move everything to the cloud. I'm not saying AWS was a bad decision. I mean, I use AWS, I like it a lot, but obviously, I mean, I feel like the switch from, from on-prem to AWS was probably like in a two, three year period. Then after that, they pull the trigger and let's go to Azure. And I know the whole thing was for cost purposes, but dude, they had to spend a lot of money though, because now there was a lot of wasted time of the developers getting familiar now with Azure to try to figure out how to do it, 
processes that they just built, dude. They just finished building the data warehouse and building certain processes and all of that. Now they had to redo all that work again, pretty much do double the work because now they got to implement it in Azure. Like it was a waste of money, dude. They, again, I don't know number figures, but there's no doubt, dude, they end up, in my opinion, they end up spending millions and millions of dollars more. So, so even, even though there, there may, there's some kind of savings that they're getting from Azure from moving AWS to Azure, was it the right decision? I don't know. Man, if you're only saving, let's say 20 bucks, 20,000 a month, but it, you're spending millions more because now you got to redo all these projects that you just finished, like literally just finished. And now they got to redo them again because now you got to implement it in, in um, Azure. It probably was not the best decision. It probably was, in my opinion, a waste of money. Probably should have just stayed with AWS. Yeah, maybe, you know, you're not saving that that money that Azure offered you, but man, you're not spending millions and millions either up front for to re to redo some of these projects. So again, it's just one of those deals, man, where keep that in mind. So that's something that has to be decided from a from a business standpoint as well. As a as a developer, you can't really decide that. But from a business, there has to be a business decision, at least some kind of commitment, in my opinion. And if there is no commitment, or there is no, um, like there's a chance you may leave, still use AWS or any cloud provider, but ultimately try to stay away from the proprietary services if you can, which means you have to build your own stuff. Maybe you're, you're an ETL process, you're gonna purchase a tool like Informatica to use, or you're gonna just script it up, right? You know, C Sharp, Python, some kind of create your own code that does the ETL process, which means because it is Python code as an example, you could just, take that and go and go ahead and publish it right to your, uh, to Azure or Google or digital ocean or, you know, whatever, uh, cloud provider that you end up using in the future. And then because it, again, that code base is doing all the work doing the ETL process. So that's the case. And then database stick to something that either you're purchasing a license for like Oracle SQL server or something that's open source, like Postgres or MySQL, right? And you could Im implement that anywhere, wherever you go. So those are just certain things to, to, um, you got to keep in mind guys, cause they're going to cost you big time. And again, as a developer, man, before you start using all of the services that you are for the environment you're in, like if your company uses AWS and, and you're like the new guy, cause they just went to AWS and you're gonna start implementing everything, like building stuff on AWS. Find out from a business, man. Like try to get some insight from a business. It makes sense from a business standpoint to start building and using all the all of the AWS resources uh, to accomplish what you're trying to accomplish. Because if not, and if they decide a year later, hey, we're gonna switch, we're gonna go somewhere else, because we feel that it's costing us too much money. Dude, it's gonna cost way more money to now retransfer, do everything, pretty much rebuild everything. So again, guys, man, just want to make a quick video, talk about that again, guys, man. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching, man. And, uh, y'all take care. Peace.